I'm not going to waste much time pushing back against the reactionaries who dismissed She-Ra and the Princesses of Power sight unseen. If you want to know the real reason why some men declared a teenage character in a children's cartoon not sexy enough, you can watch my recent video on reactionary politics and why challenges to the status quo are frightening to those who benefit from said status quo. I don't care about any of that today. I want to make a more positive video for a change. I just want to talk about why the new She-Ra series on Netflix is good, actually. That's the whole thesis. <laughs> so let's begin. Quite possibly the worst argument about children's entertainment is, it doesn't have to be good, it's for kids. When describing a bad children's movie or television show, it's extremely callous. You wouldn't say that about food or water or clothes or anything people need or want. Children's entertainment needs to be of high quality and teach excellent values because children are even more susceptible to internalizing the values of the media they consume. Media influences the way we view the world because our individual anecdotal experiences with other people, and especially those different from us, are limited exclusively to ourselves and our limited interactions, travels, friendships, and other relationships. I want to focus on the values that the series teaches children rather than simply talking about how I love all the characters and how I wish Seahawk were my best friend. So, what values does She-Ra and the Princesses of Power teach? Children's entertainment is not written by children. It's written by adults, many of whom are parents. That means it's no surprise that children's entertainment often contains themes of making peace with one's parents. Max, in a goofy movie, is deeply concerned that he will one day turn into his father, a man with whom he has almost nothing in common. But the movie makes the case that these two should have an unshakable relationship anyway, and that somehow the onus might be on Max to make that extra effort in the end, even though he is a child. Other entertainment, not specifically for children, but certainly enjoyed by children, like superhero movies, portray distant parents as people who still, deep down, love their children, no matter how abusive they might otherwise be. She-Ra says no to all that, and instead depicts two separate mother-daughter relationships that teach children the difference between a good parent and a bad parent. Glimmer's mother, Queen Angela, is protective of her daughter, something that bothers Glimmer. But the Queen is also willing to give Glimmer responsibilities that allows her a great deal of independence, especially by Season 2. The Queen is a good mother. She is strict when necessary, appropriately concerned, and proud of her daughter's accomplishments. Glimmer and her mother don't always get along, but their arguments are common in the give and take between mothers and daughters. The relationship shows children that their parents may occasionally get on your nerves, but so long as they ultimately treat you with respect, the relationship may be worth maintaining into adulthood. She-Ra and Ketra's adoptive mother of sorts is Shadow Weaver, an abusive parent who shows clear and open favoritism toward one child over another, lies to both of them about the world, and generally cannot be trusted. By contrasting a good mother-daughter relationship with a bad relationship, the series educates children on whether their parents are just the regular kind of annoying, or if they are actually dangerous. Children don't need to be told that their abusive parents really do love them. They need to be told the truth. Season 1 of She-Ra introduced us to Natasa and Spinarella, an openly same-sex couple that admittedly did not get a lot of screen time. Season 2 introduced us to Bo's fathers. Bo spent much of the episode concealing the fact that he had joined the Resistance against the evil Horde, but eventually came out to his parents about that aspect of his life, an obvious but heartfelt reference to coming out of the closet. The accusation that characters being gay is too adult for children and that characters being straight is not too adult exposes the homophobia of the argument, a lingering suspicion about anyone who is not straight somehow being inherently deviant, dirty, or dangerous. The old canard of, I don't hate gay people, but children shouldn't see anything but straight people, usually trails off at the end before the speaker can finish their thought about why. Furthermore, someone being gay is not somehow more difficult to explain to children than someone being straight. The idea that children would be confused by two dads or two moms in a television show only suggests that whoever is making this argument 
is purposefully shielding their children from the very existence of anything outside heteronormativity, which can obviously lead to long-lasting ignorance as they grow up. Lying to children by omission is not protecting them from being confused. It is, in fact, confusing them about who people really are. If you want a more comprehensive explanation about the importance of LGBT representation in media aimed at young people, there are resources in the description, but I would like to think that we're all smart and humane enough to understand the need for providing comfort and reassurance to vulnerable children. The series provides characters for straight youths to better understand and sympathize with queer youths, and it also provides comfort for queer youths themselves who want to see themselves represented in media so they can feel less alone. Young gay, bisexual, and trans people face certain obstacles that young straight and cisgender people do not. The series offers support and comfort to LGBT youngsters, particularly those who receive no such support and comfort from their parents. So there's this character in the series called Swiftwind, a talking pegasus who is the most politically radical character in the show in which all good guy characters are fighting in a literal resistance movement. Swiftwind wants to dismantle unjust hierarchies. Swiftwind, unlike the other characters like Adora, Glimmer, and Bo, is not only trying to take down the Horde, but is also unsatisfied with the marginal social progress for his own people, and is unwilling to simply put his concerns aside in the face of a monarchy that is ostensibly on his side. Children's media is full of evil empires, and media that is not explicitly for children, but widely enjoyed by children like Star Wars, has this common conflict as well. Star Wars doesn't tell us a lot about the explicit politics of the bad guys and the good guys. It only informs us through visual shorthand which real-world entities we are meant to associate with the fictional entities of the films. Swiftwind's overt politics still skirt around naming exactly where he is on the political compass, but it still somehow makes more of an effort than Star Wars. she doesn't have to show Comrade Swiftwind reading The Conquest of Bread, but explaining what he and the princesses hope to accomplish beyond beating the bad guys is still far beyond most children's entertainment. So why does that matter? Well, it's a good thing because... Everyone thinks they're the rebels. No matter your political persuasion, everyone thinks they're the rebels and that their enemies are the Empire. A character in a children's television show actually stating that he opposes unjust hierarchies and believes in an egalitarian society, presumably one that doesn't have to be ruled by monarchs one day, is a good way to let children think in terms greater than bad guy bad and good guy good. Speaking of which, allowing the bad guy characters to have personalities and relationships might help teach children empathy. I really hope that the kids growing up with She-Ra and Steven Universe and the like will internalize those good values. Obviously, children need a lot more than just the right media to grow up to be good and decent human beings, but it is a component of who we become. Kids could do a lot worse than She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Shira, Shira. I am she.